Munch, 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 munch. Hello, and welcome, friends, to another Battleground Games Live! Frozen? No, we're we're okay. Can you hear us at least? It looks like we're broadcasting live, and I don't see any dropped frames or anything. So I'm afraid that might be on your end, Lobster. Uh, hmm. Nope. Now we are okay. Yay! I solved it without touching anything. That's good. Oh, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. So, you know what I like to do after a long day, Amanda? Play a board game we've never played before. Play a board game we've never played. Well, we've played this game. We, we just haven't, haven't played, played this expansion. Yeah. The the most complex expansion in the game so far. Yeah. All right, Don't let me mind. let me eat a little bit of my brownie. Um, do you have anything that you want to add? So, um, we've played Tiny Towns the past 2 weeks. We played a vanilla game of Tiny Towns. Um, two weeks ago, and then last week we played with the Fortune expansion, which definitely added some interesting quirks to the game. Um, this one, this time around, we're playing with the Villagers expansion, which can be combined with the Fortune expansion. There is, in fact, a card I have to take out. Okay. If we're not playing with Fortune. Okay. Um, solicit. Can't go door to door if you're, you're not getting money, apparently. There you go. Yeah, that's fill your chest with gold. Oh. So and if, if we're not, not playing with gold, yeah, we don't need that. If you're not playing that. with fortune, then uh, you don't need that card. So this is a super cute game. There goes our zoomy cat. Man, if she got the zoomies right now. super zoomy tonight. Um... But it's a super cute game about building a village, and yeah. you can play it solo, which is what we've been doing. We've been playing so single player, just cooperatively, trying to max so. our score. And we actually got a really good score we our got first a game really last good week. Score last week, yeah. It very much is, depends on the luck of the draw. Like it depends on what cards you end up getting, because we had what yeah. were our scores last week. We had uh, games three and four, 38 and 28. Mm -hmm. It's a fair big spread there. Mm -hmm. Especially given week one, our uh, games were 27 and 31. So not quite so broad a spread. Yeah. So if you're lucky, you can get some things that sort of work with each other. We also yeah. messed up last time. We were trying to put the... Uh, the what chapels. was it? The quadrangle. Oh yeah, the, yeah, no, the cloisters. The cloisters the in the four corners. Yeah. And we we, we messed, messed up, up and it didn't work. We would have had an additional. What we got twelve points from them. We would have gotten sixteen. It would have been sixteen points. Yeah. 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 
No, we only got nine points because we had three of them, mm. which meant they were each were each worth three points. Mm -hmm. So it's three times three. It's always squared. Right. Um, so if you get all four, they're worth a total of 16 points. So that's seven more points. So excuse us while we eat our dessert. We got gelato, and it's going to melt if we don't eat it before too long. Mm, it is good, though. Thank you for getting gelato, Amanda. You're welcome. I've been helping. going grocery shopping. <laughs> um, my mom and I treat it like an outing. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's been lovely, honestly. Yeah, now that you're both fully vaxxed. We're both fully vaxxed. We still mask. Um, one, because it's better to be safe than sorry. And two, because we believe in being courteous to the people around us who may not be vaxxed for, you know, whatever reason. There are people who have... Immune deficiency issues, that means that they really can't get vaxxed. It'll there are children who can't get vaxxed. There are children who are still too young to get vaxxed. Um, it's modeling good behavior. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with one of my neighbors today about that. She said she's still going to go masked whenever she's like in a public business or you know a store or something. So if she's indoor in public, she will have a mask on. If she's going to be, you know, dealing with someone and she doesn't know their status, she's going to have a mask on. Yeah. Not for her own sake, but for theirs. Yeah. And it's a peace of mind thing. Because mm -hmm. you, you don't want to stress people out. No. Um, and I learned... That she was the patron who gave me a thank you card in my book drop oh, a couple right. of weeks ago. Yeah. And it totally brightened my day. I'm going to mute us for just a sec so that I can go drop the stuff in the um, okay. kitchen. So, just a sec. All right, you're unmuted. Okay. Yes, Clara. So, um, villagers like fortune has a number of additional building types that you can build they have a couple more of each of the basic type of building and they also have five more monuments to choose from um so there's the adventurers guild which looks interesting um Half Moon Library, the Northern Semaphore, Passeri Opera House, and Clearfall Quarry. So, yeah, they should have thought of that and been born earlier. Apparently, my brother once told my mom that he resents me for being born first. <laughs> and I was like, I don't really have a say over that. No, no. that's not something you can control. I okay. don't really you know think I can do anything about Then we're back. Yeah, exactly, Lobster. Then people don't feel singled out. Um, a good friend of mine has been wearing a mask for the past, like, two years, basically, whenever he goes out, because his allergies are so bad that just the pollen in the air can, like, leave him laid up for days from, uh, you know, an asthma response. So, yeah, definitely, and, you know, it's always been sort of a, people, you know, look at me weird about it. Um, so when this started and he was like, ha ha, everyone has to wear masks just like me, <laughs> he was able to give like advice on masks to like his coworkers and stuff. So, you know, that was, that's, it's definitely a thing. You don't want people to feel like the odd one out for that. 
and so yeah, I'll still be wearing masks. Yeah. In public, I'll be wearing them at work for a while now. I've got masks that are thin enough that you can still hear me nicely. I can breathe through them, but they are protect protective. Um, the only thing I have ever had any difficulty with mask related was using the microphone at work mm. um, to, to broadcast to the PA. Yeah. Which, you know, just have to speak up a little bit and I'm a yep. little bit muffled. Oh, well. So it goes. Yeah, my only issue is my ears sometimes start to hurt when I've had it on for a long period of time. That, when I was double masking, that was definitely something. Yeah, definitely. The double masking definitely um, did not help with that. But for the most part, it's like, it's such a minor thing to have to do that yeah. I, and goodness knows, I haven't been sick this year. Andy got one cold that might have been stress related. We don't might know. have been. Yep. So, yeah. It's like, <laughs> the most healthy year I've ever had. <laughs> oh, Shall we? Man. Yeah. So how right. does this work? So I've already put out all of our things. So if we can arrange our yeah. um, our Let's board. Let's go to... You have the overhead cam. Yep. So you are in a better position to set things up than I am. Yeah. So we'll put our <clears throat> buildings down here. This is our lodge board. Our lodge. Yep. Sure okay. is. The lodge. Always have a cottage. Yep. Um, let's put those. Do we want to swap the buildings up to here? Yeah, sure. And put the because yes. buildings don't, don't have to be on camera. See what our. Well, I was thinking we can put these so they're visible, even if these aren't. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so let's but scooch you everything. Ha, yeah, let's scooch everything this way. And I can't. So there, yeah. we have the cottage. Yep. And it is universal and is yeah. always there. There's always a cottage. No. Ah. So shall we um, get our new? I guess that squirrel's just going to rock on its tail. You know what it reminds me of? Emma daughter. Yeah. The squirrels in Emmett Otter that dance on their tails. <laughs> now, do we want to just pick from the new monuments? Sure. All right. Aha! The Adventurer's Guild. What's it do? So, after constructing, stack resources on it mm -hmm. in a tower. No. Don't move the bar board too far? Yeah. In this order. Um, from bottom to top is shown. When another player names a resource, you may instead place the top resource from this tower. Ah, cute. Okay. So it doesn't actually give us any points. But it, it gives us a chance to get different it resources. It does sort of sculpt our resources a little bit. Yeah. So That's do handy. you want to stick with that? Yeah. All right. So, we're going to put this up here because it's a unique okay. item. Um, so, there's only so we one need to of make them. a giant L to make that. Yes. Okay. So, we're going to want to make that relatively early, and it's got one of each. Mm hmm Okay. All right. So, that's our, our special. Okay. Okay. So, those can go away. Um, let's do red next. I've already shuffled in the new buildings. Okay. We kind of don't want all new buildings because we've yeah. had I mean, that we'll problem Yeah, we'll see before. what happens when we um, take the top. What do we got? Vegetable patch. Ooh, what's a vegetable patch do? It feeds up to six feedable buildings that are not adjacent to other feedable buildings. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to put those... There, there. Yeah. Okay. Well, sure. Then we can see them, and yeah. people can see them, and we can put them under here. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, green. A brewery. Ah. Uh, 
um, you get points based on the number of breweries in your town adjacent to at least three unique building types. Interesting. Up to 18 points hmm. for four breweries, breweries uh, that are not adjacent or are adjacent to three different types. Yeah, they don't need to be able to see the tokens. We can move those I mean, down a little really bit. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, but they need to be able to see the... Yeah, but they can see them. Yeah. Even with... Like, they don't need to, need to move that far. Okay. The cards are visible. Mm -hmm. Hello, Spear, Spear Song. Song! We have not seen you in a, an age. Welcome. Right. Glad you could be here. That was yellow. Yep. Yellow building is the theater. Uh, you get one victory point for each other unique building type in the same row and column I as think the we've theater. I this one, and it's difficult. Uh, it's a little tricksy. Yeah. Uh, orange. Yeah, the closer the cards are to the camera. Yeah, they're they're kind of as close as they can be. They, yeah, if they we've move got a much, lot of... If they move much lower, they're behind us. Like, they're behind the um, the overlay. A little bit of glare, but that's fine. Okay, so for orange, we have the temple. Four points if adjacent to two or more fed buildings. That seems quite doable. That yeah. It requires a lot of brick. The vegetable patch is going to make that tricky. Why? Because it feeds up to six buildings that are not adjacent to other feedable buildings. No, so that's we're ideal. Need to break it up, yeah. Yeah. So you do a, a your cottages in a, a grid. But I'm just thinking we have to be careful about how we arrange yeah. it because yeah. of it's how It's going to be tricky in, in the yeah. construction phase. Yeah. Um, so we still have black buildings and yeah. I'm just getting gray buildings out of to the go away here. Here's our resource pile. Gray. Uh, it is the well. One point for each adjacent blue building or each adjacent cottage. Interesting. Okay. And finally, our large black construction is the factory classic when constructed place one of the five resources on it when another player names that resource or when you pick it from the deck uh, you may place a different resource instead neat yeah all right all right so we've got our buildings yep we get some sort of Sculpting from the Adventurer's Guild, but it doesn't yeah. really get us points. No. So how do villagers work? All right, so let's talk about villagers. Um, give each player a lodge board. That's our lodge board. Mm -hmm. um, give each player three villager meeples. It does not matter what animal they represent. The animals are incidental. Okay. So I have given us a pigeon, a hedgehog, and a squirrel. Okay. Um, players should be, place each villager meeple in a different corner square of their player board. So ah, I see. So you've already done there. that. Yep. Yeah. Because, I mean, it doesn't really matter. They're going to be one or the other. Like, there's going to be one open, yeah. and it doesn't really matter yeah. to me which one. Um, sort the new building and monument cards by the symbols on the back. Shuffle them into the setup piles. Blah, blah, blah. Separate the villager cards that have a cost of one from the cards that have a cost of two or more. Shuffle the piles face down. Two, one. Okay. Um, draw one card from each pile and place the two cards face up in the middle of the table so that all players can see them. Do not use the card titled Solicit unless you are also playing with the Tiny Towns. Yeah, you already expansion. pulled that yep. out. Okay. Um, place the remaining villager cards back into the box. They will not be used for this game. So we have Scrap, one villager. Do not place a resource named by another player. I don't think that works very well for a single player game. Yeah, that's not terribly helpful. Yeah, let's draw something else. Okay. Um, but this one is renovate. For three villagers, 
replace any building in your town with any other type of building, but neither can be your monument. Yeah, that actually sounds that very sounds handy. really useful. So let's but hold you on have to, to that. Put but you have three to make villagers? three villagers do okay. it. Yeah. Um, our forage. One villager, place a resource of your choice in your town. All right, that sounds handy. Cool. All right, so how do we hire so our, and deploy villagers? Our other options were cut corners. For one villager, construct any building with one fewer resource than needed. And the other two plus were cooperate. For two villagers, construct a building using resources anywhere on your board. Mm. And innovate. For two uh, villagers, construct a building with any unique resources in the correct shape. Mm. Neat. So we're going to put those back in the box. Those in there for now. Um, and follow the normal tiny town oh, setup these. rules, which we did. So, villager placement and movement. A villager cannot occupy the same square as a resource at the end of a round. Okay. So you can place something, but at the end of the round, it one of them has to be gone. Okay. Okay. Um, when the player places a resource on the same square as a villager, three situations can occur. One, if the resource is not used to construct a building that round, the villager must move at the end of the round to an orthogonally adjacent space. Okay. Um, empty square. If there is no such empty square, the villager is placed on the player's lodge board. So right. Gone so we want to send them to the lodge board. Um, if the resource is used to construct a building, but the player chooses to place that building on a different square from the villager, the villager doesn't move because okay. it's still in an empty space. If the resource is used to construct a building and the player chooses to place that building on the same square as the villager, the villager and the building occupy the same square. That villager is now working in that building and can be used for activating abilities. So what we actually want to do is, is place get buildings building on built top of where them. they are. So gotcha. we want to maneuver them into places where we can put the buildings on top of them and then have them work in those buildings. Um, thus, players should strategize to place or move villagers onto squares that they think will be both the square that holds the final resource needed for a building layout and the square where they will choose to place the building. Because you don't want them on, unless you like want to sort of bump them into different places. Right, right. Because if you're not building the building, they move. Right. So they have, the only way to put them in a building is if they're on the square that the final piece goes in. Exactly. Got it. So you can bump them around the board by putting resources on them and making them sort of shift around yep. until they're in a place where you know you're going to end up putting a building. Got it. So you have to think ahead of time a lot. Ooh, there's a cat next to me. Following the end of each round, in the cleanup phase, players must take all villagers on their lodge board and place them, each of them, in an empty square on their player board. If there are not enough empty squares, players should place as many villagers as possible and keep the rest on their lodge boards. We don't want to get into a position where we cannot place our villagers. We want them in our buildings because we have a three villager activa activated ability. That renovate ability needs all three working. Okay. Activating villager abilities. Each special ability has a cost of one, two, or three villagers, as indicated on the villager card. To activate an ability, a player must remove a corresponding number of villagers working in buildings on their player board. Those villagers are then placed on the lodge board. Okay. An ability may be activated at any time following the placement of the resource that round, unless the villager card states otherwise. So, like, that might say something else, but right now it's... Both of those are fine. Okay. Um, players may activate any number of abilities per turn and may activate the same ability more than once if they pay the costs. However, a player cannot activate more than one ability or the same ability more than once in constructing a single building. So if you have, um, like, place a resource of your choice mm -hmm. to do it. But there are, like, multiple, there are other act abilities where it's, like, use this to build a building and you do this to build a building. You couldn't do both okay. of those. Okay. Um, each ability and its effect on a building's construction must be fully resolved before activating another ability. Got so it. you have to have the building built, and then you can't use the other ability because the building has to be built before the other ability fires off. All right, let me summarize this and see if I've got this correct mm -hmm. in my, my head. So when we construct a building where we place the last resource on a villager, 
and build the building there. Excuse me. Pardon me, chat. Um, then that villager stays with that building. And is working in that building. Right. And until then we use them. We can use them by moving them to the lodge board and activating an ability. Correct. At the end of the turn on which they are moved to the lodge board, they move back to an empty space on the player board. Correct. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I think as long as we agree that's how it works. That's how I'm interpreting it, yes. So it's at the end of the round, any animals on the lodge board move to empty spaces on yep. the player board. So, notes. A villager must always be placed in or moved to an empty square. Um, a villager cannot occupy the same square as another villager. Hmm. Villagers can work in monuments. Nice, okay. If a player must move more than one villager at the end of the round, the player chooses in which order to move them. Okay. That could matter. Villagers can only work in buildings constructed using resources. Any buildings placed on squares with villagers through uh, monument building or villager abilities mm. cause villagers to move as normal at the end of the round to an orthogonally adjacent empty square or to a player's lodge board. That's important. I'm glad we resolved that. That, that is important. Yeah. Yep. Um, resources that are placed on buildings such as the warehouse do not cause villagers working in buildings to move. Okay. Because they're, cons th those they're buildings, in the building. Yeah, yeah, they're in the building. They're not being placed in like an empty lot. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, squares that contain villagers but no buildings are considered to be empty for the purposes of building abilities such as the Citadel, Forge, and Traveler Center or villagers abilities such as Forage. So yep. you can place a resource of your choice in your town and you could place it on a square that has another villager in it, mm -hmm. build a building there and have that villager then work in that. Yeah, that makes but, sense. Yeah. We do have some building clarifications. We have the vegetable patch and the brewery. Um, the vegetable patch, fed buildings adjacent to other fed buildings cannot be fed is basically what it's saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to have a have maximum be... of six fed buildings, basically. Yeah. We could build a second vegetable patch, but even if we did... Yeah, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. It would only feed two additional buildings. Yeah. Um, and the other one we have is the brewery. A brewery must be adjacent to at least three different building types to increase your brewery score. A brewery adjacent to another brewery counts as a unique building type for both breweries. Okay. Cool. Yep, Good that makes sense. Any breweries beyond four that are adjacent to at least three unique building types do not increase your brewery score. Okay. Spearsong has two questions in chat. Yes. Can villagers placed in an early building be moved to potentially end them in a higher value building? Can two villagers end up in the same space? So, villagers cannot occupy the same space. Yep, and it actually specifies that. The value of their buildings is not actually what makes them important. Um, the building values and their point values are calculated at the end of the game. The villagers working in those buildings does not change their value. What the villagers working in a building can do is make us able to activate these two abilities. Um, and they need to be working in order for us to do either one of those. So for forage, we need to have at least one villager working in a building. And when we activate that ability, the villager actually leaves their workplace, goes and forages, and then goes back to the inn and spends the night at the inn to rest. And then we have to move them to an empty space on the board so that we can try and get them a new job. Yeah, the pictogram on the uh, thing is confusing. not terribly It's not useful. easy to understand. No, it's not. I mean, it's it's depicting building, building a cottage. Yeah, so it's, it's depicting like this building build, a cottage. This piece, this piece, but the third piece, yeah. the villager goes into that cottage. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Anyway. We know how it works. I think we've got the idea. Yeah. We'll, we'll, hopefully it will become easier to understand once we start playing with it. Do you want to strategize a little before we begin? Yeah. So the vegetable patch means that if we... We don't need it to be anywhere near the cottages. Correct. I it interpret it that way as well. It can be anywhere we want it to be. And then the cottages can be anywhere else so long as they're not next to each other. Right. So you're going to want your cottages to be in a, a pattern like that. Yeah. 
like bit, 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 bit. Yeah, you want them bit, diagonal bit, bit, bit. from each other, but not orthogonal from yeah. each other. Um, and the temple, we want in between. Touching multiple yeah, villages. Yeah, we want it touching multiple, cottages. Mu multiple cottages once it's built. Or we can build it and then build cottages around it. Sure. Because the cottages are just three squares. Yeah. And I think the temple will be a little more annoying mm -hmm. to build just because it's the, the L. Um, we can try for the brewery. We're going to have at least one temple and at least one cottage and at least one vegetable patch. So that's three unique building types. Mm -hmm. So we could do that. If we build the Adventurer's Guild, that counts as another. I don't know how much it's worth trying to... Um, Bagel Top Games. Thank well, you. Well, hello, raiding. Bagel Top Games and Raiders. Welcome. 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 We are playing Tiny Towns with the Villagers expansion. A bagel raid. That sounds delicious. It does sound delicious. I love bagels. You bagels. do. You have one like every morning. I do. I miss being able to get Cape Cod bagels, but it's a fair ways away. Thank you all for being here. It is so good to have y'all. So uh, what we're doing, folks, for the Cream for cheese the Raiders, and jalapeno bagel standing by. It does sound like your jam. Uh, no, I, I'm cheese, not a jalapeno not a bagel jalapeno person. person. Jalapeno is not a breakfast food for me. It could be. It could be. I'm not saying it's not a breakfast food. I'm saying for me, it's not a breakfast food. I should probably get into chat since I'm a mom. Yeah, sure. Strawberry and cream cheese. I could definitely get behind that. Hmm. You know, lobster, if you have pizza on a bagel. Then you could have pizza anytime. <laughs> do we have some of those in the freezer? We do have <gasps> pizza bagels in the freezer. Ooh. Chili and cheese. I mean, we're going to have chili this weekend. Yes, we are going to so make So we are chili. playing, friends, uh, Tiny Towns with the Villagers expansion. Yes, so... Um, Good at loaded. You will quickly get the hang of this, but we're playing it in solo mode. We're doing it cooperatively, myself and my wife. Um, so the idea is that we're just trying to maximize our score. Yep. Thank you for the follow, Matt, look. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you. My goodness, follows all over the place. We really appreciate this. Yeah, it's going to make this a very entertaining stream. This is great. Why did I have to permit that as a... I don't know. Who boy. Stinky beauty. Thanks for following. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we are just about to start playing. We have um, dealt out um, all of our building cards. And we were just strategizing before yeah. we get started. Uh, has anybody out there played Tiny Towns before? Are you familiar with how it works? When bagels show up, follows follow. We like that. Yeah. I That's appreciate great. that. That's good. We appreciate it. Normally, oh, this, is this board game stream is streamed from Battleground Games and Hobbies, which yeah. is where the Battleground in the title comes from. Uh, it's a game store in uh, Abington, Massachusetts. There's actually three locations, but the primary it's one. It's in the Boston, the greater yeah. Boston area is where the three store stores um, are usually. Um, but since pandemic, we've been playing from our living room and, and now dining room. Yeah. Because it's... Um, but, you know, someday we will be back there, and we will get be, to again, play with be friends again. We'll get to play with our friends again, which will be lovely. Um, yeah, we do it wrong, so you don't have to. <laughs> Thank you, Sphere Song. <laughs> Sphere Song knows my motto. <laughs> <laughs> A All game right. store of no fixed address. It has three fixed addresses. Just... It's usually we're, you know, most of them are near Boston, are like near the greater Boston. Area, yeah. But, you know. North and south of Boston. Yeah. Norton's a little far out. Yeah. But that's okay. All right. So you'll, you'll pick this up pretty quickly. It's a very simple game mechanically. It's in the strategy yes. that we're trying to maximize our points. So that's why we were sort of strategizing when you folks came in. Um, we're going to be building buildings on this little 16-piece grid here. You didn't know Tiny Towns had a solo mode. It does. Yes. 
um, that's where this deck of resource cards comes in. Because what you do, instead of, na instead of each round the master builder naming a resource, you turn over three resource cards. And then choose from those three. Yeah. So that changes the strategy a little bit. So yeah, we've been uh, playing that. We've played that this for the past two weeks. We played a vanilla game two weeks ago. Last week we played with the Fortune expansion. And this week we're playing with the Villagers expansion. And we might throw Fortune in there as well, just to make it super complicated. Yeah. But, but for now, super complicated. we're playing with Villagers, which is going to be complicated enough. Yeah. So, so shall we reveal our three resources and start yeah, building? Yeah, let's look at our three resources. We have wheat, wood, and stone. Well, That's good. Yeah. We need all those. Yeah. Um, so I think we should aim to put a vegetable patch perhaps in this corner. In I don't, corner. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really um, matter. It's going to end up being in a corner, and whatever corner it ends up with, we then build the temple and cottages out and about. Yeah, and way. we've got half of what we need for a village for a yeah for a vegetable, vegetable patch. patch. Do you want to just start that? Yeah, and we just won't put it where our animal is until right. the end. Yeah, that sounds okay. good. What do you want to use first? The wheat or the uh, wood? Let's use the know. wood because the wheat is useful for the cottage as well. Sure. There we go. Perfect. So we use Ship a wood. Back to the bottom. And we get a new resource option, which is Another stone. stone. All right. So for stone, uh, we're going to be building a temple in a corner, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, hi, Clara. We're probably we're probably not going to end up building a factory. I feel like we're probably not going to build an adventurer's guild because no, the forage as ability. As neat is, as the adventurer's guild is. I don't think we're going to build it. It's so big. It's big and it's complex to use. Yeah. And it, I think it's more useful in a competitive game. Yeah. Because then you really, you don't have to use what, we get choices. Yeah. We don't have choices in a competitive game as much. So this is more useful for that, I think. Let's start building a, well, we could do a brewery. Brewery. <laughs> yeah, Andy's or a hair. Temple. Andy's hair is amazing right now. Oh, thank you. Andy's hair is fantastic. Amanda's getting a haircut tomorrow. I'm getting mine all chopped off tomorrow and dyed platinum blonde because because you haven't had a haircut in more than a year. Well, a professional haircut. Yeah, when well, my mom's neighbor cut my hair in her driveway over the summer last year. And I buzzed the side of your head. Yeah, you buzzed the side of my head, but Karen will uh neaten it up make it actually nice oh yeah i've i've been blonde a lot um just not in the past year you can see like the the remnants of my last blondness here uh so are we gonna try and do temples and breweries i mean we can if we're building a temple let's build it to this corner then we would so we would want a uh, stone there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here? Yeah. That's my thinking, at least. Sounds good. Okay, next up. So, Spearson, how have you been doing? Glass. It was good to see you. Let's start a cottage. Yeah, let's do that. Where do we want that? There? Well, towards that corner, I think. Sure. And more, more glass. glass. That's problematic. Well, we have the wheat. We can put the wheat down for the vegetable patch. Or for the cottage. Yeah, either way. All right. Let's do it for the cottage because then we'll clear sure. some space. Yeah. No. No. Yes. Yes. Good. Cool. You can get pretty well. Your schedule has been chaotic in the last two months. Yeah. More glass. Ooh. Hmm. All right. Uh, so we can't build the glass in the temple because it's going to go there. Yeah. And that would push him out of the way. Uh, we could start building a brewery. Yeah. Just like build it. Uh, yeah, build it down to. Build it down to where there. Do, what does the brewery need? It needs to have. It needs unique to. Unique buildings. 
No, it's based on the number of breweries in your town that are adjacent to at least three unique building types. Okay, so yeah. Uh, let's build it down this way, I think. So after sure. we build this, we'll finish it. Yeah, that was my thinking. Yeah. Come on. Okay, brick. Brick. So we build a cottage. So now, brick. Uh, I, I don't know if you chat can see things. the shape of the cottage here. Um, but so what we're doing is... I put a brick on my bird. We have a yellow, a blue, and a orange arranged in a little L there. Yep. And that is the symbol for a cottage, which means now we build a cottage, and because we built it in such a manner that it is on top of this animal, this pigeon is going to be in the cottage when it is built. Yes. So. We're going to build that building, and now the pigeon is in the cottage, working in the cottage. So now we have, when can we send the pigeon to forage? Anytime. Okay. I'm pretty sure, unless it like says not. Um, that was brick we just used. Uh, an ability may be activated at any time following the placement of the resource that round. Okay. Unless the card states otherwise. All right, our next resource is more wheat, which means we could start another cottage or we could put a, a wheat in for our vegetable, vegetable patch. patch. I kind of want to do the vegetable patch. Okay. Wood, which we also needed for the vegetable yeah. patch. Yeah, so we might as well do that. Perfect. And all we need is another wheat. We can have the squirrel work in the vegetable patch. Yeah. Oops. Mm -hmm. Next resource, wheat. Hey, got there. Time for a vegetable patch. So, resource. Yep. Matches the vegetable patch schematic. So now he is working in the vegetable patch. Put them next to each other for now. <laughs> that squirrel just does not want to stand up. No. I'm sure he's working really hard. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, there we go. OK. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. That was the wheat? Did we use yes, that wheat? Yes, that yeah. was the wheat. OK. We've got to get better at that. Uh. Next resource. Brick. Brick. All right, so we could build towards the brewery, or we could build towards the temple. The temple needs two brick. Yeah, I think we need to use so it for the temple. Brick, brick, right? Because we're going to do stone there. Or, I'm sorry, we've got the stone Before, there. Yeah. So brick, brick, glass. Glass, yeah. Got it. Okay. okay. So brick. Yep. There goes that squirrel again. Wood. We want to do... Um... Well, wells and theaters. What do theaters? It's one point for each other unique building in the same row and column? Yes. Okay. Um, so we're building a brewery here. Yeah. We're going to want another cottage here, maybe? Yeah. What does the brewery need? It needs to be um, to at least adjacent to at least three unique building types. So ah, okay, yeah, so we, we don't actually want, the want next to two cottages. Yeah, we could build the brewery out this way. Yeah. Okay. Shall we build towards that? We'll put sure. a, a stone in for the brewery. We've got two animals available to hire now. Here's our other brick. brick. Excellent. Yes. The completed building ends up with the last resources expended. It can actually exactly. go in any of the places that you've had resources, but with the villagers expansion, you want it to go, well, you want to put down the last resource where the villager is because otherwise the villager gets bumped into another space. So you're kind of planning the building to end where the villager is. In the vanilla game, you don't have to do that. You can end up putting it we could put it here, um, but because we want this hedgehog working in that building so that it's available for us to use, we want to be able to, excuse me, end on the villager's space. Yeah. So glass um, on the hedgehog? Yeah. To finish the temple? Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay. Though we could be bumping our villagers around so they end up in other places on the board if we didn't want them in the corners. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to strategize that. Soon we're going to be moving our villagers around. Yeah. So. Got our resources back. And we are building a temple there. It's very holy hedgehog. Yep. Hedgehogs are very holy, but just by nature, Andy. Well, they make holes. Exactly. Okay. So there's three animals working in buildings. Let's see what our next yep. resource is. Wood. Wood, okay. So we're going to have to start building some theaters. Yeah, God. Because we don't want more vegetable yeah, patches. We don't need we're we're going to do wells. Holy hedgehog, Batman. God, that actually, yeah, I could see that actually being a quote. Yes, 100%. Huh. Um, so do we, uh, theaters, one point for each other unique uh. building in the same row and column. I'm just trying to think out how this works. What if we do one here? Mm -hmm. Because then we'll have different, like, we'll probably end up with another cottage here. Yeah. And a cottage there, but we probably won't need another cottage here. Yeah. Like, in this row, we don't need another cottage necessarily. All right. What do you think? Sure. So we could start building it either like this or like this. I feel like like this because we're going to want to be building cottages here. Yes, we are. All right. What do you think? Perfect reasoning. I am happy with it. So, so wood in that yeah. space. Yep. Okay. If we get stuck, we've got animals to help us. Yes, we do. Uh, so stone, stone there. Stone there. Yep. Glass. We've got everything we need for our theater. Finish the theater? Yeah, with more might wood. as well. Get that wood out of there. So here's the other thing. We could put the theater here. Because yeah. there's going to be a cottage here, and there's a cottage there, but we don't necessarily need another cottage here or here. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be a cottage here, but there may not be another one in the row here. Sure. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Because we were going to want a cottage here, but... Yeah. Yeah. So if we build the theater here... Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Oh, I used the wrong building for our vegetable patch. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I should actually do that. Oops. We're good. There's our mistake for the day. Ding. If, if that's a mistake, that's yeah, a minor one. Nice. At least that's easy to fix. That was a simple one. All right. Uh, next resource. Okay. Glass. Glass. Well, we're, we're going to want another couple of cottages. We probably want a cottage yeah. here and a cottage here. Yep. To feed the temple. Mm-hmm. Um, so glass there, Yeah, glass obviously. there in either way. Okay. So far, we haven't had to hire any animals to do anything. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, uh, that's another cottage piece. And we have the wheat we need to make that yep. cottage. And, and more, more wheat. wheat. Okay, so cottage. Excellent. Perfect. More wheat for the other wheat eaters. You want to put it here so sure. it feeds that? Yep. Okay. Okay. So this is currently getting us zero points, but yep. if we build a cottage here, correct. Okay, cool. And just staying on. It gets us four. If we, yeah, yeah. If we can get another cottage there. All right. So a well. We could start building a well here. Hmm. Yeah. Because it'll be next to two cottages. Yeah. So a well is one building. point for each adjacent cottage. Yeah, that would. I mean, that would get us two points there. Yeah. So let's start we, building. Well, we could put, theoretically put another one here. Another cottage here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So let's put uh, wood here. And we don't want to build that well until we've built that other cottage. Yeah, because we need that space. 
Well, let's use one of the wheats to yeah. start the cottage. Okay. I have the feeling we might be hiring a villager soon. Brick, we're good. Brick is a cottage piece. Yep. And stone. All right. Yeah. So now let's use a villager. Yeah. Let's use a villager. Forge? Yep. We're going to forge for glass okay. and put glass there. Okay. So let's send this cottage villager over here. Mm -hmm. Take a rest. We're going to put glass out. Mm -hmm. Put it there. We're going to build that building. Yep. That's confusing. Yeah. It just vanished. Yeah. It's like a magic trick. Um, and that is a cottage that's going to go there. Right. Uh, and then at the end of that turn, this animal goes back to the board, right? In an empty space. Should we just put it here and we'll build a well and um, yeah. it'll work in the well? Exactly. It'll Make work that on the well. <laughs> yep, that that bird is just diving like straight into the well. No, it's one of those dipping birds. Oh yeah, that's absolutely what it is. So Bagel Talk Games, what were y'all playing tonight? What were y'all doing? Do you do um, board games? What are y'all up to? I'm gonna build that well. Let's do that. Go. Marvel Legendary. Oh, man. Nice. Yeah. We've played Marvel Legendary on stream. It did not go well. You stream we got it totally twice destroyed. A week. Wow. Oh, that gets a follow from me. Yeah, definitely. Hi. Um, Let me follow you. <laughs> uh, yeah, Marvel Legendary is fantastic. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we had just started playing it. So. Now I see what your user icon is, and I'm, I'm very amused. <laughs> we, uh, we had just picked up Marvel Legendary, or our friend John had, right before PAX East last year. That's super cool! Um, Special stream on Saturday, where the chat gets to play as the mastermind. Nice. That's very cool. I like that. Or no, yeah. I'm thinking of Marvel Champions that John had yeah, picked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but we legendary have played Marvel Legendary. The... Yeah, we've played Marvel Legendary, and we have gotten our both butt times. Yeah, yeah, the Mastermind completely destroyed us. Take some coordination. Um, what time on Saturday, Bagel Top? We both work on Saturdays. We should come though. We, we should, should though. I mean, I can tune in from work. It's not like we have patrons in the building these days. All right, let's build this well. Yeah, let's build this well. So now this pigeon is working in the well. Down the line. <laughs> 2 p.m. Pacific, that's perfect timing because we are Eastern, and that means that'll be 5 o'clock our time, and I'll be just getting out of work and getting home. Yeah, that works out well. Yeah, so that's actually perfect. Andy gets home a little afterwards, so yeah, we don't, we have pie stream a couple hours later, but mm -hmm. we can multi stream. That's easy. Cool. Yeah, I like Marvel Legendary. Yeah, we will, um, we will tune in. Thank you. Yay, networking on Twitch, <laughs> finding new board gamers to play with. We sometimes do chat play along games. Um, tonight's isn't, but um, we do play uh, like Mysterium and Obscurio fairly frequently mm -hmm. and Concept sometimes. Concept and is fun. Yeah, yeah, chat is more than welcome to, to uh, join in concept. with that. Um, Yeah, it's, it's tough to do that, but we have a lot of fun with it. We've also um, played a lot of the Unlock games, and we definitely appreciate chat's input when we play Unlock. Because <laughs> goodness knows there have been times when chat members have um, definitely brought uh, some good knowledge to the table <laughs> that we would not have figured out a puzzle without them. Yeah, the escape room games, the like deck of cards escape rooms. Um, we've played all the ones that are out right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, Except there for might... we haven't played the Wizard of Oz one. That's true. So, yeah, and they keep putting out new ones, so we'll keep playing them. Um, 
but yeah, we love playing chat play along. So anytime y'all want to pop in, if we're playing one of those, it, people are welcome to join in with us. We've played Obscurio and Mysterium multiple times with chat as a player um, or members of chat as players. It's, we find it super fun. It is. It's yeah, awesome. It's a good time. We also play uh, every once in a while if we need to fill time. Dark stories. Yeah, <laughs> I think we've used up most of the dark stories. Well, we've used up the good ones. Sure, Maybe we've the got less awful ones. Stupid ones. Yeah, <laughs> that we could do. Um, if you've never played dark stories, I will explain it after this game. So. Uh, the token they, cups are making you think of Reese's. They are muffin cups. They're they're silicone muffin cups. We actually gave a set of large ones to Pi, and she has a set of large ones to use for the same purpose. Or to make or muffins. To ba- or to make, you know, cupcakes with. Tiny pies. Tiny little pies. Uh, all right, so Amanda. Yes. Uh, a couple of things that well, I'm thinking about well, now. Well, yep. Um, we probably want a cottage here. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to have a brewery there. Yeah. So we're going to want, we've got... Um, vegetable patch, cottage, maybe a well there. Mm-hmm. Although no, a well doesn't make any sense there. Yeah, uh, we want, um, if we have a brewery, it needs to be adjacent to three unique building types. Yeah. So if we have a cottage here and the brewery is here, we're going to need something that's not a cottage there. The question is, do we want to bother, I mean, we kind of... We're committed to it. Although, yeah, we, are, we can change it to something else. We can renovate it. That's true. Or, or, it's the beginning of another temple. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So if we end up wanting to pivot from breweries. Yeah, we could put a temple here. Mm-hmm. And then a cottage there. No, it needs to be next no, to two course. cottages. Two fed um, cottages. But that if doesn't we put work. a temple like here. here we could put a cottage here and like a cottage there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. I'm okay, on board. Cool. All right. All right. Uh, so for <laughs> that, we need Perfect. brick. Yes. I can't hear the word brick now. Without I know. Thinking of Andrew's Gardon. ruined us for bricks. Yeah. Brick is going there. So we play. Um, Andy and I play D and D with a group of our friends, I'm as one there. does. And um, we've been playing an extended Ravnica game, which has been super, super fun. But one of our characters is a Minotaur who runs an anger management group called Brick, where they hit things with bricks. He has, like, flyers that he hands out. It's adorable, but it has ruined the word brick for us. Yeah. Um, so I started a cottage here. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, figure. Um Oh, Actually, maybe good. that was a mistake. Yeah, it might have been a mistake. I got ahead of myself. Yeah. That's fine. It's okay. Uh, wheat for the cottage yeah, goes there or that. there. Yeah, it doesn't matter where. That's amazing. This game has been so much fun. We have um, our party at the moment is a Minotaur mm. running an anger management workshop. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a Centaur who basically adopts every creature or plant she comes across. Because um, she adopted that, the the plant dog, the moss dog. Yes. Um, we have a, a very spindly Vidalk, an inventor, and um, a, a Simic hybrid who likes, she's got gills like a fish, but also likes setting things on fire. Yeah, she's an interesting one. She's very interesting. All um, right, Amanda. So, yeah, we've been having a good time. <gasps> Sphere Song! Jules is in our game. It's a ton of fun. We should figure out a way to, like, play with you at some point. Yeah, I need more d d in my life. I would happily I've been DM reading, for you. I've been reading Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. And I am having such ideas. Every time I read a new D&D source book, my brain fills with ideas for things I want to do with players. Do we still do weed? I mean, never have. I have twice. It was fine. Um, you got Van Richten's yesterday? Yeah, yeah, Van Richten, so good. 
Um, okay, so I think we need to use some villagers, Amanda. Yes, I think we do. You're uh, right. Here is my thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to complete this. Yeah, we need our brick. Yep, we need there. a brick there, and we need a brick. Uh, brick there. Which one would you want to build first? Well, this takes up more space. I think if we get this done, mm -hmm. um, that makes it... And we're putting it here, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. So I'm going to send this squirrel okay. out to grab us a brick. Yep. And we're putting that brick here. Yeah, I'm excited about um, Van Richten's because... I run two D&D &D groups for work. I run a kids D&D &D group for ages 10 to 15, and I run a teen D&D &D group for ages 13 to 17. And the kids that I work with have been like really excited about building new worlds and playing in like a wide variety of settings. Um, and they've expressed a little bit of interest in using the Innistrad plane shift document that Wizards put out, but it's it's not that much. There's not much to it, but I can definitely make use of the stuff in Van Richten's to flush that out a lot, Dang which it. made me very excited. I used a wood to, so that we can build a uh, a well, a well, um, but drew another wood. That's fine. Uh, oh, we should send this person somewhere. Yeah, it needs to go to an empty space. Doesn't matter. Well, I mean... I mean, it does matter yep. which, but yeah. All right. Um, shall we have one of our other villagers get us another brick? Oh, you know what? Kids would love that. Um, bagel top. If you don't mind me calling you bagel top. Um, I work at a library. I'm a children's librarian at a public library. And I would say once your local libraries start doing in-person events again, I would highly recommend reaching out to one of your local libraries and finding out if they are interested in having a volunteer run a gaming afternoon like that. Because frequently, especially with like teen events, like the sort of tween, like 10 to 14 age, it's hard to get people to run programs sometimes, um, at least for us. Um, the older teens like to do their own thing and the kids like to do their, you know, like to do stuff with us. That tween age is real hard to capture. So reach out to a local library and ask if they're interested because they may well be like really looking for something to keep that age range busy. And if you've got the patience for it, um, it can be very rewarding to work with that age. And if you're into Marvel games, I do a painting stream mm. weekdays at 10 a.m. I am going to be painting uh, Crisis Protocol, not Ooh. this month, but next month. That is my next painting yeah. project when That's I'm done with the thing I'm making stream. now. That's, uh, That's over Tanatoes. Yeah, twitch.tv slash Tanatoes. All right. All right, so I think we need to get another brick. Yeah, well, so fortunately, gonna, we do have two villagers. I'm going to send this hedgehog, this holy hedgehog. Out of the temple. Out of the temple to get us a brick. Okay. Put the brick here. Yeah. We're going to build a cottage there. There, yeah. yeah. So we've got a couple of empty spaces that we can't fill. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Um, and then this hedgehog will send over here somewhere yeah all right i mean we can theoretically fill this space this space is going to end up empty mm -hmm. but we can theoretically build in this space you're right we could build a well there yeah i mean technically we have this area yeah so we want we want another cottage. cottage there or there well we don't actually want it here oh um, you're right oh, Right. No, we'll just build the well there. It doesn't get a point for the well, but it... Or no, this is unique in We're each direction. We're going to end up with a second well here. Yeah, so we'll build the well here and have an empty space. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. but we don't want a cottage here because then we're not getting points yep. off of that. We want a well there. So we want the cottage here. Yep, so. I agree. Um, okay. But if we're building a well here, then... Okay, let's put glass there. This is where it begins to get tricky. This is where strategy yeah, comes in. I kind of wish you in. hadn't put a well there. 
glass we don't need. Mm. Um, if we're putting a well here, we need stone or wood there. Doesn't matter which. Stone, okay. Perfect. You are very visual art challenged. Andy and I both got into miniature painting through his workplace, which is Battleground Games and Hobbies. And I have found that painting miniatures, I, I cannot draw to save my life. Um, aside from geometrics, I can do geometrics pretty well, but I can't draw like artistically. Um, but painting is super fun, <laughs> especially when you have references to work off of. Amanda, I have a relevant question to the game. Yes. Um, we are probably going to have to place brick or wood here or here. Yeah. What happens to an animal when they cannot move to a blank square? They go to the inn. They go to the inn. And, and then, then they then come back, to, they an come back space. to an empty space. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yes, Clara, that's our cat. An orc artificer in your life. Your fine motor skills are lacking. Maybe painting minis would help. Honestly, I mean, there are some very cheap pre-primed minis out there that you can get, and you can get a basic set of hey, paints Clara. very easily. And you could try it out. Oh, guys, out. Oh, check oh. it out. It's, it's time. Clara. Clara's Cat here. Visit. So Hi, quick, Clara. So quick story for folks who are new here. This is our cat, Clara. Clara went missing for two months last summer. Um, and we searched and searched and searched. We had half the city searching for her. She was famous. Yes, she was. Protect the hedgehogs. <laughs> and um, she, we did find her, we found her, and now she is home, and she is safe and sound. She managed to keep herself very safe. She had no injuries, no sign of any bites or other wounds, no breaks, no nothing. You cannot eat those. Um, she says, but they look so that. delicious. Well, she's staying with another family. We don't think so. We don't so? think so because she had lost a fair amount of weight. She lost about a pound and a half. Um, which is not a lot. It's not a lot, but it means that she wasn't getting fed perfectly regularly. Nico. We think she was living in some, and she's also incredibly skittish of anyone who isn't either of us. And um, even me, she's fairly yeah, skittish. She loves you. She's my baby, but um, even me, if I startle her, if I sneeze, she's off like a rocket. Yeah. Um, she is a baby girl. Um, she's very easily startled, and she's very good at hiding. She has found her way into cracks and crevices we did not know about in our old apartment. We had no idea they even existed, and she found her way into them. Um, like there was a crevice under our under our cabinets on in the kitchen. Didn't know about that until nope. she found it. So she's very good at hiding. Where we think she was was in a shed in someone's backyard and we think that person might have been occasionally putting out food either for her or for their own pet and she was scavenging from that. She was also definitely scavenging in the yard of the house that we found her in um, because the guy who lives there has a cat that will come out into the backyard with him and I think he was giving that cat treats and stuff outside. It's possible. And there were, that's why, why else would she be in that yard if she wasn't staying I in also think yard? she was probably drinking from that swimming pool. I think she was drinking from the swimming pool, yes. Which can't be terribly healthy. No, but she seemed to be fine. Her blood work all came back clean. We took her to the vet after we got her back. Uh, blood work came back fine. They couldn't find any wounds on her. She didn't really even have much in the way of uh, fleas, which is amazing. And um, she was skinny and yeah. slightly dehydrated. A little flea dirt. A little bit of flea dirt. Cats are liquid after all. Yeah, definitely. Oh, sweetie. And um, she was in our laps and clinging to us as soon as we got her home. Ah, Clara Kitten. And uh, she is our miracle girl. All right. Um, Isn't she my baby girl? Amanda, I am going to propose mm -hmm. that we place a wood here. It's mm -hmm. going to force this squirrel into the inn. Mm -hmm. And then we can have a um, well here. Okay. Um, just to have an additional building. And yeah. then we're going to build a cottage, cottage there. there, which will make that into a four-point building. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Okay. I don't love it, but so, yeah. Wood there. 
I was like, what is going on? Do you want to build that well as well? Yeah, we might as well. Might as well. Well, <laughs> well, well. Oh, actually, hang on, hang on. Uh, I have, no, don't worry about it. Uh, I, I have no thoughts. I was going to say, we have this renovate action, but it requires three animals. Mm -hmm. So I think we're putting the well there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we could put the well there if we knew we were going to be able to renovate it. Right, but we're not going to be able to because there's no way we can have all three animals in built buildings at this point. Yeah. So I think our, our goal is uh, well here or here mm -hmm. and probably cottage. there and yeah, a cottage, cottage there. there. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And we have everything we, we need have, for a cottage. Yeah, brick wheat. Uh, so brick here. Yeah doesn't really matter. We're not going to be able to put a well there. Or no. Yeah, we can. No, because we don't want the cottage here. We want it here. Yeah. We're not going to be able to put the animal in the cottage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Break there. Yep. We get wood. That's part of a well, so that's mm. good. Wheat there. Yeah. Which sends him to the inn. So cottage. Yep. I think we're very, very near the end of this game. Yeah, I think we are. So would either of those places? Yep. And the last animal gets us the stone we need yep, to finish that. Forges. And a well there, because we want it next to a cottage. All right, scoring time. Um, oh, you need a, a pen, don't you? I have pens. Pens I've got, because I've got them up with my D&D stuff. All right, scoring time. Scoring time. Let's see if this has anything Ooh. about scoring. I'm sorry, Clara. Yeah, I was going to ask if animals um, that are still in buildings earn points. They probably do, but we used up all our animals who are in buildings. So it says uh, squares that contain villagers but no buildings are considered to be empty for the purposes of scoring. Town hall rules work as normal when playing Tiny Towns Villagers. The solo variant rules work as normal, um, but the Folly Tower card should be removed. Okay. Which is one of the well, it's uh, one of the gray gotcha. cards. All right. Cool, Sphere Song, we'll see you in a few minutes. Yeah, she is definitely a special cat. Um, she got out not because she was looking to get out, but because she was asleep in a window in our new apartment. And the um, screens were the not rated to hold a cat. Yeah, the screen just peeled right out of its frame um, behind her and she went scrabbling down. Fortunately, we were on the first floor, so it was only a drop of about six feet and she was okay, but it was, terrifying for her it was terrifying for us it was at like five in the morning and um, we had only been here for a week and she did not know the area and she took off and that was that for two months almost exactly two months 55 days if if we hadn't caught her that night and it had been one more day it would have been precisely two months so you know what I'm noticing on our scoring card uh -huh. I'm noticing a trend regarding the points that we get for our black buildings. I yeah. mean, ha what points? They black don't really. They don't generate be sculpting points. rather yeah. than generating points. So, yeah. All right, game five. Five. All right. Zero points for uh, factories. Cottages. Three points if the building is fed. They're all fed. Yeah, none of them are adjacent to another cottage. So that's fifteen points. Yeah, not bad. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, three points if it is fed. And there are five of them? And there are five of them. Nice. Not bad. Yes, the... Temples. Eight points. Uh, are they four points each? Four points each if adjacent to two or more fed cottages. This one has two fed cottages? Yeah. This one has two fed cottages? Eight points. Eight points. Okay. No breweries. Nope, we didn't end up doing that. Uh, we do have one uh, theater. Yep. 
and it is worth one point for each other unique building type in the same row and column. So that's one, two, three, four, five points. But no. Oh. This, this building, right? Yeah. So it's four points. One, two, oh, three, okay. four. Okay. Not great. But no, whatever. Not as well as I would like. Um, wells, one point for each adjacent cottage. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, not bad. We did not build, did our, not build monument. our tower. And we have minus how many three, three for empty spaces. All right. Now, this is not going to be our highest point no. in game no. of all time, so folks. 20, 35, 33. Okay, that's. No, 32. 32. Because it's 15, it's uh, 8 and 8 is 16, plus 4 is 20, then 35 yep. minus 3, 32. Yep. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's not 38, but it's yep. better than 28, and it's better than 31. And it's better than 27. Like, it's our, it's legit our second highest game. Nice. So it wasn't perfect, but we got there. Got there. Shall we play another game? Now that we've got the hang of the villagers... Um, yeah, I'm going to get myself something to drink. Do you want something to drink? Yes, please. What would you like? Just water is good. Okay. Let me mute myself for just a second so right. I don't bl deafen gonna, anybody. I'm going to clean up this and okay. draw new village cards. Okay. Okay, you're unmuted. I'm back. Cool. I'll be right back. What do you want to drink? Uh, water, please. Water. Yeah, water would be fine. Because I used up the last of the iced tea. Yeah, that ginger ale. Yeah, but I already had a ginger ale today. I don't need another one. Okay. So I'm going to draw new uh, building cards. And we're going to try with a new combination of buildings. Do we want to do new villager abilities? Yeah. Okay. It. Let's see. We have. Nope, we don't want that. Let's do cooperate. For two villagers, construct a building using resources anywhere on your board. Interesting. And our one is going to be scrap. For one villager, do not place in. Uh, no, we don't want that. That didn't work. So cut corners. For one villager, construct any building with one fewer resource than needed. And we mm -hmm. can't combine these, right? You said we Correct. Yeah, we I'm, can't I'm muting them. for a sec. All right, we're back. All right, so um, we have the trading post. It's worth points. One point if you... Uh, it's worth one point. Yeah. And you may treat it as a wild resource for future buildings. Now I remember why we didn't ever build that. Yeah. We have the fountain. Uh, yeah. Lobster makes a good point. If you need one fewer resources, you could build a well for one piece and fill empty spaces. Uh, the fountain is two points if it's adjacent <coughs> to a fountain. Yeah, so you can build little. Uh, we have the abbey, worth three points if it is not adjacent to a trading post, a bakery, or a cottage. Or no, I'm sorry, or a public house. Yep. <coughs> um, we have the bakery. Three points if it's adjacent to a uh, nectar farm or trading post. Public house, one point per unique building type. You have uh, an even, an even number, number of. of. Oh, man. That's going to hurt my brain. Is zero an even number? Yes. I mean, yes. I think we want clarification. Is Does it say in the instructions that yeah. zero is an even it. number? Zero is definitely an even number. I agree. 
I'm just saying, if we build nothing, is the we public build none house... none houses. Yeah. Okay. So that's a villager's card, so the clarification would be in villagers. Yeah. Uh, which one was that? Public house. There is no clarification on the public house. Somebody Google that for us. We'll do, we want to pull, do we want to pull a different green card? No, it's fine. We just don't know how it scores until the end of the game. I, I think it's I, I think it doesn't count none. I think you have to have at least one. And an even number. And an even number. Okay, yeah. that's fair. Uh, as long as we agree. Yes, it is. Zero is divisible by everything. <laughs> you, you divide just... zero by two and you get zero. Yeah. If I have no apples and you have no apples and we divide our none of our apples between us, both of us still have zero apples. So let's face it, zero is the loneliest number. Uh, yep. Nectar Farm. So Nectar That's Farm another feeds, new card. It feeds all of your fed buildings in your town if you have an even number of fed buildings. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So, but we're going to want to build two nectar farms, even though we only need one. Yeah. It doesn't get us any points. No. Well, that might not be worth it. It would only add one more point yeah. to the public house. Yeah, I think one nectar farm, but then we want an even number of cottages. Yep. Um, and if we have more than one public house, each one gets... One point per even number of buildings. But does it get points for itself? It's a unique building type. And yeah. We have two yeah, of them. I agree. It gets a point for that. Yep. So, so yeah. We sort of did some math off stream the <laughs> other day, and we figured that to get a good score in this game, you need an average of three points per square. So any empty square or any square that's only earning one point is yeah. pulling your average down. Yeah. But anything that's over three points is pulling your average up. Yeah, zero, zero is technically even because it divides cleanly in, um, in any number. It's I just know, that it's always zero. Dividing by zero gets you zero. I know in magic- Always goes to zero. It is explicitly stated that zero is even for the purpose of anything that requires yeah. X equal to And legendary to zero. to bagel top is- Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow. And I hope um, I placed our villagers. Yep, I see the villagers are there. Do we want to use different villagers? Just for there variety? aren't really. There, oh, there's, there's no more. There's like a mouse. Okay. And that's it. Like there are four types of villagers. All right, so. that's fine. Um, I do love. Wolf from Math World says zero is even. See. Perfect. I may not be a math genius, but I do know my 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 zero facts. <laughs> All right. Do you want to do a little strategizing before we start? Let's do a little bit of strategizing. Um, the Abbey's going to be a pain in our butt. Not adjacent to a public house, a bakery, or a trading post. We're probably not going to build any trading posts. We're going to be able to use cutting corners, like Lobster mm -hmm. said, to build fountains in single spaces. Uh-huh. Um, Cooperate for with two creatures to build a s building using resources from anywhere. So again, that helps us build into spaces we can't reach. Yeah. I like this. These two are going to make it easier to fill the board. Yeah. Um, but they're not going to do any fixing for us. Zero is also a round number in more ways than one. <laughs> nice. Math jokes. All right. I don't think we're going to be building this. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even know what uh, we... What, it was, what does it do? It's worth five points if it's an adjacent to an empty square at the end. Mm, okay. It's pointless. It's I mean, so five points is good, but no. Because that means the average between the two spaces is below three. So yeah. it pulls you down. And there's only one of it. Yeah. So it doesn't feed the public house. Like, if... Yeah... Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to do that. I think that's pointless. So, the public house is cute. 
Mm -hmm. And I like it. Yep. Are we going to have even numbers of more than three unique buildings? It was lovely meeting you to you as well, Bagel Top. Thank you thank for you coming for joining in us. and thank you for following. And we will definitely be checking out um, your stream. Yeah, in two That's days exciting. on Saturday. Ah, oh, yay, new people. Love meeting new gamers. Yes, gamers. Gamers rock. Yeah. Thank you for bringing lovely people with you. Your chat denizens are very nice. All right. So I feel like an even number of fountains. Yeah. An even number of bakeries. Even yes, number we are of doing a new houses, game, Sphere Song. Even number of cottages would mean four points per public house. Mm -hmm. That's not bad, but it takes a lot of work. Yeah. Like you said, we're probably not going to build abbeys. Yeah, but like if we had two public houses, two nectar farms, two cottages, and two fountains. Or two bakeries. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. And two public houses, yeah. All yeah, right. I think we can do it. We're going to try. Let's start with a nectar farm. Yeah, let's it start with It does not have to be farm. adjacent to anything, nope. right? It's only an even number of fed buildings, so we need an even number of cottages. Well, we want an even number of cottages anyway exactly. for the public house. Precisely. All right. So, like, those two actually work really well together. Yeah. Because they both care about the same thing. Yeah, we got 32 points in the first game. Second highest score of all time for us. Yeah. Not bad. Good for us. Did you hear Necrofont? No. I don't I think, think so. so. No. All right. So we've got three quarters of what we need to build our first. Oh, you heard Nectar Farm. Oh, ne yeah, Nectar, Nectar Farm. Nectar Farm is the farm that we're using to feed our cottages. So the thing about tiny towns is that it has different building types that match up with these. The red buildings are always a way to feed your cottages, but they have different They're shaped layouts. like silos. Yeah, they're shaped like silos, and they've always, like a farm, a barn and a silo. And they've always got, um, they're almost always in a little square. To build them. Public houses, the green buildings are always sort of inns or pubs or um, breweries. They're always like a social gathering space. However, um, Sphere Song, having said that, mm -hmm. if I do a Ravenloft game and you play in it, there will 100% be Necrofont in that game. So Andy is playing a lawkeeper in our um, in our Ravnica game, an Azorius lawkeeper, an Azorius lawkeeper, and he decided that um, he doesn't carry holy water; he carries law water, legal water, legal water. Yeah, yeah. it's water blessed by a judge. <laughs> the judge has decreed it legal. You're so down for a Ravnica game. I, I enjoy Ravnica, Ravnica so much. Ravnica is so much fun. One of the best D&D settings. Oh, it's so good. Anyway. Anyhow. Um, Do you want to start building in Necro? Yeah. The yellow buildings are Necrofont? almost always like businesses. Yep. Like bakeries and stuff like that. Um, like Orange buildings are with are always staples. Like They're religious always religious yeah. sort of things. The gray buildings are always like a well or a fountain or a shed or something like that. And the black buildings are almost always like some way to do a little bit of sculpting for your town. But they're big to build. Yeah, we're going to have trouble because we have no sculpting here. Yeah, aside have, from the trading no post. Which, yeah. But we do have ways to cut corners. So. Yeah, that might help. Yeah. All right. Is a necrofont a well in a graveyard? Mm. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's a very particular type of headstone. I thought it was uh, the font you use for dead speak. Well, yeah. When you're writing it. down and the language of the dead. over the necrofont in okay. the graveyard. The necrofont on the necrofont. Yeah. Um, Keep saying it. It will stop meaning anything. <laughs> um, I say we start building a necrofont in one of the corners. <laughs> Let's do that. We'll okay, do some fine. That's fine. 
And I think we have to add a quote to the database yeah, now. Yeah, Sphere Song. I like that idea. Clara, you're looking particularly adorable. Glass there. Yeah. Clara always looks particularly adorable. Uh, and, and more than usual. Brick. Brick. There. Now we want wood. Why Run would we wood. need wood? Oh, well, as we start building something else. Yeah, we start building a cottage. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. For the cottage? We've got all the bits for that cottage now. Start building pub. a pub. Yeah. Where we where do we want it? See, this is we don't actually care much about. Yeah, we don't care about location placement this aside time. from being like we need to make sure it's in a place that we can like that won't mess us up with other things. Yeah. I say we end up putting it somewhere up here and sure. have like that thing. Okay. Working in it. That thing, the hedgehog. That pointy thing. That pointy thing. Uh, we needed that Dear for the God, neck what font. Is that thing? Glass. We need that for both the pub and the cottage. Uh, well, the cottage oh, already the has cottage. glass. Um, the pub and if we're so, if do we, we want to put do... glass there? Yeah. Um, start building another pub. We want two of them. Yeah, we do want two of them, so we might as well. Should we just build them next to each other? Yeah. <laughs> Put everything next to the other. Just twin them all. Finish that cottage. Yeah, might as well. Corner? Doesn't matter. Maybe in the presence of the necrofont, souls don't properly detach from bodies so they can't go to their destination plane and instead are trapped attached to the raised zombie they must watch in horror as it attacks the ones they love. I like the way your mind works. Yes, yeah, Fear Song, you are totally going to get invited to play oh, in yeah. a Ravenloft game. Yeah, 100%. All right. Uh, so we built a thing. Yep. We got more brick. Yep. Uh, so we can start work on another cottage, or mm -hmm. uh, pub requires wood. Do we want to just finish the pub? We can finish pub? the first pub. Finish that pub. And now our hedgehog is working in it. Excellent. Wheat. You want to start work on a cottage? Yeah, might as well. Wood uh, for the pub. Yeah, might as well. Yay, D and D. Um, hmm. Brick for the cottage. Sure. And then we're hoping for glass. Yeah. Which is useful for both the pub and Yay. The glass. All right. Do we want to finish the second pub? It'll clear the most space, I think. Yeah. So, duh. 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 Perfect. All right. So, start another cottage. Yeah. Are we going to want a bakery? So, um, or it's two? one per unique building type in your town that you have an even number of. So, yes, we do want other things. And we want the bakery adjacent to that. To that. So we probably want to build it here. Mm -hmm. So we can put it either there or there. Yeah. So okay. let's put wheat there. Okay. I love D&D. &D. God, do I love D&D. &D. Glass, do we want to finish the cottage or continue the bakery? Let's finish the cottage so we have at least two cottages. <coughs> okay. That means 
each pub is worth at least two points. Yep. <coughs> Excellent plan. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> wheat. Okay. Um, <coughs> we've already got wheat for that bakery. Let's use some brick for the bakery. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. I swallowed wrong. Homebrewing a warlock subclass, which is not so much a traditional patron as they are sensitive to spirits of a certain kind. I like that idea. I like creative warlock patronage. Um, I feel like we're going to want to build a couple fountains. <coughs> oh, I think we are definitely going to want to build a couple and of fountains. And we've got a couple stone. Yep. Stick one there. Sure. We also now have two villagers working mm -hmm. that we can make use of. Wood. To finish that fountain? Sure. And put it there? Yep. Now that squirrel is working at the fountain. Maybe it's a historical reenactor. Sure. Like Ben Franklin in Philly. <laughs> Necrophont. Uh, glass. Yeah. The bakery. Would, yeah. Stone for another fountain. Yeah. The game definitely accelerates once you know what you're doing. Yeah. Brick so finishes much. that bakery. Yep, sure does. All right, so the bakery is in yellow. Shall we put it here? Sure. Wood. Um, wood can finish that f fountain. Yep. Don't want to go overboard with fountains. They fill spaces. Yeah. Um, but now we have two of them, which means that the, they count for the pub. Yep, the pubs are worth three points each now. Yep. Um, so I'm thinking we could get another bakery here. Yep, absolutely. Easily. So that means we put this here. Yes, I agree. Wood. Another pub. We're going to want an even number of pubs. But yes, let's we're going to need to do another pub, but yeah, yeah we can definitely down here. So build it over this way, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brick for the bakery. Yep. I like that they actually, the flavor works slightly it with does. The, uh, the type yeah. of materials for the type of house. Yeah, it makes me happy. All right, wheat. So I guess we're starting another cottage. Yeah, I don't love that. All right, let's think. We're going to be putting this here. Yep. Um, we could end up with a cottage here. We're going to want two and cottages. Then a cottage. Yeah, we need two cottages. And we want two pubs. Yep, we need two more pubs. I'm just trying to think when do we start cutting corners? Yeah. Uh, well, we need stone for the pub. Yeah, so we might as well do that. Yep. But we can't put anything here until we've built that bakery. Well, no. Well, that's that's the there pub. There we go. There's the pub. Sketch of the patron abilities. At first, they are constantly accompanied by spirits. Unseen servants at will. You can only summon three at any one time. You may gain proficiency in one of our current history, nature, religion, and expertise in any of those they happen to have as the spirits whisper knowledge to them. So I would be tempted to go through Tasha's and yeah. because the whole point with Tasha's book is that she helps you construct new 
yeah. character archetypes. It sort of lays out rules for making not broken characters. Yeah, Tasha's uh, so is really good Tasha's for that. Tasha's might help with, with doing a homebrew. Warlock, yeah. I have heard, though I haven't read enough to get to it yet, that the new bard subclass is utterly broken. Broken as hell? Yeah. What's the new bard subclass? I don't know. I haven't reached it. It's in uh, Van Richten. It's in Van Richten. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we have a brick. Yeah, let's finish that. Six, the spirits defend them some number of times per rest, forcing a reroll on their attack. Hmm. I like, I like the direction it's going. I like the idea. All right, so that is another bakery. Yep, now we have an even number of bakeries. Yay! Why did I do that? I don't know, why did you do that? Color association. Yeah, so we need to build another pub. Well, I mean. Yep, that's, that's part of a pub. pub, so goes in or the stone middle. For stone pub. for a pub. Yeah. Yeah. Unless we want to put it here. Oh, sure. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Wood for a pub. Mm-hmm. 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 Pub is done. Yeah. Excellent. So we still have an even number of pubs. So, we could start building a cottage. Yep. Uh, let's see, we could do cottage, cottage. And then cottage, yeah. And then fill these three with fountains. Well, we want two with fountains. Cause oh, you're right. We want an even number of fountains. There's not, yeah, okay. Um, so, we want, we actually probably want like. The only thing we want, that cares. We want cottage, mm -hmm. cottage, okay. well, well. Ah, I see what you're saying. Because we yes, want yes, the yes, 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 absolutely. Other. Okay. Mm, yeah, an offensive boost at ten. Yeah, because you wouldn't want to give it uh, any earlier than so that. So we're starting a cottage with wheat. Yes, we are. Put that there for now. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brick for cottage. I keep saying, and I keep failing to do this, that we should count cards because mm. these we're putting them on yeah, the bottom and they're coming back up to the top. Uh, wood and stone for fountains. Let's do a wood here. Okay. Because that doesn't stop us from. Oh yeah, it kind of does. Stone here. Yeah. Build that. I think we build it here, or uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. No, it does because we want, we're going to have to build another one and put it here to get maximum points for the fountains because the fountains are too if adjacent to a fountain. Yeah. So we want, we want all of our fountains to be adjacent to another fountain at, at least. At least one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, we have wood, wheat, wheat. Yep. We're going to be building one more cottage. We could put there. It so there. we could put wheat there. Brick. All right, so now we have to start cutting corners. Yep. So if we use one to build a cottage using these two. Mm -hmm. So Yep. cut corners. Where do we want to build that cottage? There? Yep. That works. OK. And now we, we use this use brick. brick. Yep. I think we've done it. I yeah. think we've got everything we need. Oh, oh wow. hey, okay. it even gave us cool. the glass we needed. So that cottage can go. Doesn't matter. Let's put it we're up not going to build another yeah. fountain. We're going to have one empty space. Yeah, we're going to have one empty space for it. Else? 
So I don't. We didn't really play much 3.5. No. We got the back into is, D&D. Well, we picked up the player's handbook for D&D 4th edition and couldn't find anybody to play with us because everybody hated 4th edition yeah, no so much. Yeah, no one liked 4, so. Um, uh, so we've got everything we need for our last thing. Yeah, so stone well. and wood. So if we wanted to ruin our score, <coughs> we could yeah. build one more building, but we're not going to. If we didn't have the pubs as sort of the engine of our score, we could build another well and it would be worth two points. Um, but if we build another well, then we lose points from, from all, all, four. All, all four of our pubs. So we're not actually going to do that nope. um, because we're only going to lose one point for having an empty space. Time for scoring. Time for scoring. This is going to be a high scoring game. I am really looking forward to this. Oh, yeah, I have not heard good things about force. We have no black buildings. Mm -mm. Cottages, we have four of them and they're each worth three points. They are fed because... They're fed because we have an even number of fed buildings. So that's 12 points. Okay, excellent. Uh, we don't have any temples. Okay, that's fine. But we do have pubs, and each one of those pubs is worth four points. Is worth four points. That's, so that's 16, 16 points. points. Nice. Our bakeries we are have worth, two of them. And they are both adjacent to a um, farm, yep. well, to a nectar farm. So that's six points. Yep. Our wells are each worth two points, so that's eight points. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, did we did not build, not build our it. monument. And we have negative we have one point. One point missing. So that's yes. going to be 28, 36, 42, 42 41. 41. That's a pretty good score. What's that get us on the scorecard? Let's look. 41 points. Just one away from life, the universe, and everything. 38 or more, Master Architect. Master Architect. Our second Master Architect Yeah, because we got 38 points on game three. Yeah. We just hit it on game three. Woot. Thank you. Yeah, that. That was a good combination of building types. Having the building types that would let us, that like both cared about even numbers. We wouldn't have been able to do it if we couldn't cut corners. Yeah. Because we did villagers... have to cut corners to get through get that yeah built the villagers expansion was really really nice that was really neat we never actually used our our higher level villager um cards but we definitely could have mm -hmm. construct a building using resources anywhere on your thing so if we hadn't had those even cards that cared yeah. about the even points we could have used these two villagers to build one last you know, we, Absolutely. Could, we probably could have done it um, because, yeah, we could have done it. That was awesome. Yeah, that was great. That was fun. That was so, a good time. Someday maybe we'll combine... Villagers and uh, Fortune. Yeah, the two. All right. I think we're going to um, we're gonna finish up here. I have a stream in um, 40 minutes or so. So I'm going to be reading another chapter in The Dark is Rising's first book, Oversee Under Stone. That is over at twitch.tv slash Merriman Lion. That's me. Merriman Lion actually is a character. Gomery. Gomery. Great Uncle Mary. Yeah. Seems unfair that you get minus one. You can't have less than one space missing unless there's or one resource building somewhere in the deck. So there are no one resource buildings, but there are special like monuments and like the shed, which is one of the gray circle buildings. The shed says you can build it anywhere on your board. So you can end up like filling in empty spaces with them. Yep. There are definitely ways to fill an empty space on your board. One of the monuments everyone. gives you no negative Effects yeah, for having an empty space. Yeah, zero negative points for having empty space. And one of those, the monument that we pulled earlier, um, would only give scores you, if you have an empty space yeah. next to it. If you have an empty space next to it, it scores five points. 
which means that you, it's basically worth four points for those two spaces. Yeah. So, Darkest Rising is not in the public domain. I'm not making any money off my stream, and we don't save the VODs. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm not terribly worried about it. I'm doing it for a small audience of friends and family. So, I'm not terribly fussed over it. Naughty, naughty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's me. Um, like I said, I'm not terribly fussed over it. It's like, I'm not saving the VODs. I'm not making any money. Um, I'm not attempting to take the place of professional audiobooks. So. Let's just hang out with Amanda while she reads. Yeah, hang out with me while I read. I provide Sometimes commentary. Um, I'm only doing one chapter at a time, so I'm not providing the entire book at any one given time. Um, so it, it comes in under fair use, I think. If anyone were to challenge it, I could probably go in. And, Are you separating uh, out the yeah. villagers? Yeah. Okay. I should switch views. Nobody needs to see that view. All right. So, yeah, we're going to wrap things up. I hope you will join us over at twitch.tv slash merrymanlion for Amanda's read aloud at 10 p.m. Eastern and at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow at twitch.tv slash tanatos. You can join me as I paint some untamed beasts. I am very close to finishing some, so tomorrow during Finishing Friday, I will finish some of them. And yeah, I'm not hopefully. terribly worried. It's one reason, though, that I haven't monetized my stream. Yeah. Um, I could have. I have an invitation to affiliate because I hit the requisite number of hours. I hit the requisite number of followers. I hit the requisite number of people watching at a time. Um, but I'm not really interested in monetizing my stream when I'm, I'm reading other people's books. If I was, like, reading my own fanfic or whatever, I wouldn't be so fussed over it. Um, if I was reading my own original work, I wouldn't be fussed over it, but, um, I'm, I'm reading other people's books. I'm not going to monetize that. So, but yeah, Andy will be painting tomorrow morning. He is going for affiliate. So if you have not given him a follow. I would appreciate a follow. Yep. Yeah. Go we ahead. Throw him a follow. 12 followers away from affiliate nice. now. We're getting closer. You are getting very close. Um, so yeah, give him a follow if you can, and he'll be playing. Um, he'll be painting tomorrow morning. He paints every weekday morning at ten o'clock. That is Eastern. Yep. Um, and yeah, he'll be over there tomorrow, and then I'll be on my stream again in the evening. <clears throat> Let you go make that eleven. Excellent. Thank you, Spear Song. Um, and if, by any chance, anyone watching is looking for a good workout oh, yeah. um, stream. Blanche. <clears throat> my good friend Blanche is a um, personal trainer and fitness instructor who um, lives in Colorado. And she does free workout class streams on her channel, Blanche Case Fitness. She does that every... Um, Every Friday night, she does a, uh, a weightlifting with things around the house stream. So <clears> every Saturday morning, she does a, um, a very basic uh, like weekend kickoff workout. Tuesday and Wednesday nights, I always forget which is which. One is jump around, which is cardio, and one is perpetual motion, where you basically don't stop moving. So that's endurance training. And one of the things I really love about Blanche, aside from the fact that she is a very good friend of mine, is that she is incredibly good about like welcoming people of all levels of ability. That's sorry. Thank you. Um, all levels of ability. So if this is your first time on her stream, she is just as welcoming as if you've been there a million times. She does not expect you to be an expert in anything. She does not expect you to be able to do everything. If you need, if you have questions about like, how can I adjust this for an ability because I have an injury or um, I have trouble doing one thing or another because of balance issues or something, 
Um, she will help you come up with ways to alter an exercise that will work for you. She's wonderful about that. She is super, super positive and um, super non-judgmental. She's not going to go giving you crap about like your body or anything. That is not why she's doing fitness streams. She's doing fitness streams so that you can feel as good as possible about yourself and your body <clears throat> and what your body can do. Um, but she very much is not there to tell you that your body should be able to do X, Y, or Z. She wants you to figure out what makes you feel best and have fun doing it. So I would encourage people if they're looking for a, a stream like that, um, if they're looking for a good thing to do, she is wonderful about that. I am one of her mods. I am in, I'm usually, I'm almost always in her Friday stream. Saturdays I alternate because I can't always be there um, because I work on sat alternating Saturdays. Though over the summer I will be there every Saturday. And uh, hopefully I'll see some people there. She's, like I said, she's really great. And her classes right now are very much, um, what do you have around the house? You don't need a whole lot to do this. She doesn't really want people to feel like they have to do, they have to have like weights or something at home. You don't have to have professional equipment. You just need a spot on the floor that's big enough for you to lie down in, basically to do stretches. There so yes. Um, so I, I, I want to talk up her stream because she's really great and she's a good friend and she is one of the most body positive fitness streamers I've ever like encountered and that's hard to find. So So I think yeah. we're going to say good night to everybody. I'm going to say cheery bye. Cheery bye. Cheery bye. And we'll see you over at Amanda's reading stream in about half an hour. Yeah. I'll be there. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night. <laughs>